Welcome back to our final episode of Wowza Studio Sessions live from NAB 2018. I am joined by another LiveXer, the founder of LiveX, Corey Banky, to recap NAB Show 2018. We're really excited about this partnership that we've built with Wowza and doing the studio here on the floor. And also for this segment, we've got Aubrey Russell, tech directing in the back actually in the front she is actually front and center the the center focal point of the wowza booth if you will <laughs> and uh, she's been a great sport with keeping up with all of the questions and things people have asked about the setup and the workflow and how we're using the clearcaster encoder for facebook live so corey welcome to wowza studio sessions you've been busy all week roaming the floor finding great solutions that we can use over the next year two years down the road and uh, first of all, first impressions of this year's NAB from a high level standpoint. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me on my own show. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you to Wowza. This has been amazing. Uh, the booth here has been amazing. I saw everything at the show. I didn't miss pretty much anything. I went all the way corner to corner. Um, it takes a great effort to do that because you, you really do miss some things if you don't really look. Um, I would say we have more of everything at this show, but we don't really have more of new, new, right? Right. Probably uh, the most exciting thing that I saw was yesterday at 2 o'clock, uh, the SRT Alliance uh, conference. I keep talking about it. And today I went to uh, High Vision and I saw the Azuro Group makes this product. It's an IP transport product using SRT and High Vision Makito Xs. It's amazing. Uh, I've been looking for the last two years at an IP transport, low latency IP transport that's dependable right? Uh, for contribution for, for LiveX and our MCR. Yeah. Something to replace, not to replace, but to, to be an alternative economical replacement for satellite fiber. Um, they yeah, have because, uh, you know, we run into a lot of scenarios where we need dual satellite pass or fiber pass back and forth. And, you know, but actually the biggest reason why you're so interested in this box is for its remote production capability. Yeah. So satellite costs, you know, forty five hundred dollars a day. Plus you have uplink space and downlink costs. Then you're encoding. Um, so if we can find something that is very robust but is more economical. So yesterday at the Alliance, they had the vice president of uh, IT for the NFL <laughs> talking about bringing in uh, you know, multiple ISOs of referee cams into their centralized uh, so that the ref what the referee sees in replay, they're seeing. They used it all last season with no glitches. They had the vice president of transmission for ESPN. <laughs> I mean, just like like the most baller people I've That's like, seen on stage. Me, exactly. Mean, you to see, see to learn from people like yep, that. Yep. And so I typically don't go. Typically, I'll just see the vendors. Sure. Now on the vendor side, you ha you had more 12 GSCI. I thought there. I personally thought there was going to be more SMPTE 2110. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was more NDI, which is really cool. You're seeing a lot of really cool NDI use cases. Two years ago, I poo-pooed NDI. I'm going to be the first to say, honestly, I was a jackass, and I, I <laughs> said bad things about NDI. But now I've seen all these use cases with NDI that are right. pretty amazing. Yeah. We have a use case at Vox Media with NDI. Uh, I saw amazing graphic use cases. I saw encoding use cases. I saw transport use cases. Uh, we have a, a, a pod uh, at, at NDI Central, production bot where it's a portable switcher that we use at LiveX all the time. Yeah, we're actually using it on this show to drive yep. all the graphics and playback. Yep, and it's great. And we don't typically use NDI in our workflow, but there was more NDI. There was more 12 GSTI. But, like, little things, right? Like, like I went to Ross's booth. They have some amazing products, but they haven't really updated the, the Abacus air cleaner. They haven't really changed the Mira. They haven't really changed Graphite. They, they added to the Ultrix, but it's a 144 by 144, but it's not a 256 by 256. So Yeah, and I it know was a 72 by before. Yeah, and they had a 72. So, so it's like I felt like this show has been incremental now. Wowza coming out with hardware kind of came out of left field. The Clearcaster is an amazing product. I yeah. would put that in the top five things I've seen at NAB, even though I already knew it was here. Absolutely. Um, you go in Facebook's booth and you have a lot of, you know, Mevo. You have a lot of really cool products that are consumer based, but, you know, n Clearcaster kind of takes Facebook Live to another level that it that it needs to be at. Yeah, I've actually learned a lot about the Clearcaster, even though we were like heavy users of it back in, in, in the studio and also in the field in New York. 
But, um, you know, there's a lot of things about the Clearcaster that I just learned here at NAB in, in talking with Facebook and, and figuring out, you know, and, and learning about how the Facebook and Wowza interaction really occurs between the Facebook Live API and the Clearcaster. They communicate directly. And so the Facebook Live API is able to control what the Clearcaster sends it, which is really a novel approach to encoding, having the platform control the encoder as opposed to just accepting whatever it takes. I think that's really, really fascinating. Yeah, totally. And you know, on the on the camera side, you had Sony came out with Venice. You had some red knockoffs. You mm -hmm. had uh, Panasonic came out. They have the EV. Uh, Wait, the red knockoff. We got to stop and talk about the red <laughs> knockoff. So there's a couple Chinese knockoffs called. One's called Mav, uh -huh. and it's it literally looks like a red. I saw some. I mean, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of you know people using a model so sony venice to me right yeah, sony, sony venice, venice feels like sony is going after red sure but why like yeah. why not so i don't understand they have the it's like they've always been a, a, had a hard time breaking into the cinema space yeah the uh, f55 was was almost like it, it wasn't it wasn't a, a bust but it wasn't what a red is right sure or, or an Ari alexa it, it didn't really take that space yeah yeah i think a lot of that has to do with the way that they all of their previous cinema cameras were very modular based and 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 you know it was a lot to get the different pieces you know red is also a modular camera that's what they found the whole that's what jim Gennard found the whole company on and like building a, a modular camera that can continually have components replaced in it, but that's something that Sony never graduated to with yeah. the modular cinema cameras. You know, they came out with one recorder and one body, and you know, and then you had to piece things together. But they never had like modular replacements. Like, oh, buy this piece and it upgrades that, yeah. or you know, like sensor replacements that Red has been doing. So the the Venice is their first like all-in-one cinema camera yeah. right like that's that's one of the most fascinating things that i've seen from it but um you know they still don't have all the all, all the options and opportunities you know that red has created in their lineup with the different versions because basically right now if you're a professional content creator there's a red for every price point yep you know 100%. which yeah oh and a phone and a phone and a that phone one no one has yet yeah, but you were one of the first pre-orders. I was. The, of the, I still don't have it. I thought phone. we were getting it in like February. Yeah. Well, it's due out this summer. They finally announced that they're shipping it this summer. Oh, so sweet. I didn't see. Yeah, that. we'll we'll be getting it in a, in a few short months. But like there were incremental. So so the FS5 has a Mach 2. I cannot tell you what it changed. Yeah. Right. It looks the same. It looks similar. I'm sure there's small things. That, I'm sure there's new things about it. But you know the output didn't really change. Um, there were many incremental uh, features. Now, I did hear, I talked to someone about the new Vericam. Yeah. That is actually pretty amazing, and it, and it could be something that replaces, you know, your higher-end broadcast workflows, and that's something I know you've, you've always wanted me to kind of look at. I'm at a huge Vericam for that. fan, yeah. And and I've I actually talked to two people who have Flypack systems who are, they are serious about buying it, right? Yeah. You know, but, like, no one did a 2110 16-input switcher except for EVS, Sony, Fora, all the big guys, right? Yeah. So where is that middle market? Where where are people trying to innovate in the middle market for people like us who, you know, we're not cheap. <laughs> we're not trying to sure. get the cheapest thing, yeah. but we want to get something that's innovative and, 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 and utilizes new things. And I feel like... Well, we can only purchase what our clients are willing to pay for. Right. Right. I mean, that's the that's the bigger story is like, I, you know, we will spend obviously we, we will spend any amount of money it takes to get the right solution for our client. Right. I mean, we have what a quarter of a million dollars in comms. Yeah. Right. More more in comms than we do in cameras. Yep. And, you know, that makes sense for our business and our business model. But, you know, if if we're looking to repackage that and rent it out with our productions then you know where's the roi in in buying a hundred and eighty thousand dollar switcher yeah and i saw this esports evs switcher that is amazing yeah <laughs> like if i bought that everybody that works at livex would be like oh my god this is the most amazing thing in the world it looks like it's from mars like it's got like beautiful screens i didn't i didn't even want to ask the price right it's like VizRT had some amazing products all the it feels like it feels like the haves have and then the have-nots aren't innovating, Yeah. right? Yeah. And then you have a lot of cloud management stuff that you know is built on AWS, you know it's not proprietary, so, which is cool, but you know, it just felt like the big players are doing big things 
and and there's not a lot of people in the middle. I applaud people like New Tech, the TC1, uh, uh, what they're doing in the space, what they've done with NDI. Yeah. Um, VMix, VMix. They one. have that beautiful new four stripe yeah, panel. I mean, I've never seen a four stripe panel on a si software switcher, and very rarely do you ever see a four stripe switcher in any Anything. broadcast truck, any control room, yeah. anywhere in the country. It's usually at the Ross booth or at the <laughs> Grass Valley booth. Right, right, right. Or like what I would dream or imagine is in, you know, Bristol at, at exactly. ESPN. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, you know, Blackmagic, they had already came out with an amazing round of products, you know, a couple months ago. So for me, you know, besides the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which was really cool. Very cool. Very I cool. Actually, a lot of people hate the body. I really like the body. It kind of reminds me of that Hasselblad, like Lunar DSLR that they came out with. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I don't know, like, obviously that's a fun toy, I, but like, I don't know how it would work in our our like business and our workflow. But the coolest thing about it is that it has a dual native ISO. So most cameras now that are coming out on the market have this dual native ISO, the Vericam, yep. um, the Panas Panasonic EVA-1, uh, and you know, allowing to have different base ISOs. I think the Pocket Cinema is 400 and 2500 as the base ISOs. And you're seeing a lot better low light performance yep. by taking that approach to just choosing a different processing path for the chip. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens with that because I see a scenario where like why, instead of switching to different ISOs, different gain values, like why isn't the, if, if there's a way to do it twice, why can't every incremental change in the camera become like a new native ISO, basically, mm -hmm. and get the maximum amount of quality you can out of that sensor? Well, and you know, on the audio side, there was more people doing Dante, which is great, right? Yeah. There's more Dante across the board. There, uh, some of the things that I saw that were innovative, I'm going to talk Dante about. More Dante than Maddie. Yeah, well, yeah, it was like it was like you know the little last year it was like you saw the little Dante spoken here signs everywhere. Mm -hmm. This year there was more of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, the thing I'm going to nerd out a little bit like I went to SKB, the case company, right? And I found they have a, a composite uh, plastic uh, rack that's inside of a case. It's revolutionary. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. And, like we have Gator cases and other rack cases, and we've we've kind of like like had to fight this battle of like, what's a good rack case to travel? And I found that. So that's like, a, that's the only thing I took a picture of. You, you guys were like, hey, do you have any pictures of the show this? this? And I was like, guys yeah. been walking the floor <laughs> all week and took zero <laughs> photos. Well, I have all the brochures. I'm a brochure collector. I'm oh, old yeah. school with the paper, right? right? I'm like, do you have a brochure? Do you have a brochure? Yeah. Um, you know, there were a lot of there were there were a lot of knockoff stuff that was really cool. There was a lot of uh, more stabilizers. I felt like I felt like every year there's like 10 percent more stabilizers. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was some really cool um, uh, autom some automation stuff. The Kira robot. OK, the robot okay, camera so is robots, amazing. Probably one of the biggest things that yeah. like made a splash right yeah. when you walk into Central Hall. Um, a Nikon company, MRMC, actually has the Bolt Bolt bot bot bot. Yeah, um, and they're doing like high speed, uh, you know, mo uh, motion capture with all pre-programmed moves, and yep. they've got it all keyframed and timed out. And but DJI has a similar thing at their booth. Okay. And then at the uh, 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 under booth, they're they're slung under or something. They have the Kira. And the Kira and the Mia, to me, the the software and the Kira and the Mia, and these are robot arms with a camera. Amazing, right? Um, I you want to apply robot robotic not to um, stop motion and 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 high speed capture, but actually to live video. Yeah, I think. Well, I I, I was talking with the Cheddar guys about this. Uh, we talked extensively, and it's like I feel like we we get in live, we get myopic, right? We get yeah. we get completely myopic. Of, oh, that's a two shot. That's a one shot. That's a this. It's about like where are we innovating? Where are we innovating in our shots? Like imagine in our studio if we had a Kira robot. Right. And that would replace three cameras because yeah. basically it's a fluid master the whole time. So you're just fluid master. I go in, I move to the two shot. And what if like what if the future of broadcast is that? And what if like we're yeah. used to fast shots and we're using HEVC so we don't have macro blocking. So we're not worried about like, you know, whips like not looking good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's another consideration. Obviously, they'll break up on the delivery side when you're, you know, playing it out, macro blocking and everything. So uh, there's also a lot of transmitters, like new transmitters, yep. wireless. Oh, hey. Hey, that speaking of cameras that, uh, and not switching a whole lot, I think that 
uh, we've even been able to do that with a couple of our clients. We have a show that uh, uses two cameras on a Ronin with a ready rig. Yep. And I, it's basically a two camera show, but it's completely fluid the whole time. And you hold on one camera for a really long time. And it's it makes it feel like it's a full like post-production produced show that's being aired, but really it's all happening live. Oh yeah, you 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 sell me on. Uh, you just say the word fluid master, I'm sold. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm completely sold. It's a really hard shot to pull off, but I, I am 100% completely sold. Get some of those brochures out, Aubrey. That he, <laughs> he doesn't have any photos for us. There Let's you go. Um, so, you know, the other thing, transmitters, right? There's a ton of Amimom transmitters. Uh, Teradek came out with some cool products. Yeah. Teradek has the Link product, which is, I've been literally begging Teradek to make this forever. Yeah. And it's pretty much a bond, but instead of just audio and video, it's everything. So it, it provides Wi-Fi, it provides, you know, internet for your whole production, not just your video and audio stream. So that's really cool. That was a really cool product. They have a 10,000 foot bond, uh, bolt which is amazing. Um, Amimom, uh, there, you saw Amimom transmitters everywhere. Like yeah. every booth has a transmitter. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I thought was interesting is LED screens. I know this is a really boring topic, but LED screens, you're seeing a lot of movement from 2.4 all the way to 1.5. So before, it really is. So before you were seeing a 1.5 pitch, uh, 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 a pitch, and now, and that was like the Cadillac, right? right? And now you're actually below that at the Cadillac level, and the actual like value is the 1.9s. And 1.9 looks amazing on broadcast. 1.9 like, was always like the best you could right, get for right. like forever. Is like you know you wanted a show that had 1.9, especially from our perspective when you know when you shoot. A, yeah, when you're bad, shooting the screen. Yeah, yeah, when you're shooting the screen, when you shoot a bad video wall, you get really bad moiré. And so totally. what we're talking about when we say these numbers is the distance between the LEDs inside of the LED wall. And the shorter that distance, the better it looks on camera and the better it looks to the naked eye. Your eyes can fill in the gap to a certain extent, but once you uh, get too close or you know, too focused on it, then it starts to moire and look really bad. Uh, you know, a lot of jumbotrons and stuff are all made with big, like... Yeah, because you're far away, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. And th there were a lot more lens manufacturers this year. I felt like there were two or three lens manufacturers I hadn't heard of. The lens manufacturers that are there, they, were, they, were, they had beefier shows. That was cool. Central was like lighting central there are a lot of really cool lighting effects yeah the com companies i think brought it clearcom brought it the new lq system if you have never checked it out you should like it is a two thousand dollar box that's basically a jackknife for anything you can use all of their apps you can do ip transport it's really amazing on the com side kind of nerdy but it really amazing Riedel came out with some cool new products rts came out with some new cool new products it's just I feel like every, I feel like because 2110 came out in November last year yeah and was finalized the SMPTE standard 2110 mm -hmm. the manufacturers didn't have enough time to make the the leap into their hardware sure so you're seeing a lot of last year's show here yeah it's like the end of last year the the last innovation from last year is here so and I say this every year I'm like I hope next year will be better because I'm more of a pessimist when it comes to this stuff but yeah. it just well, like, unfortunately, we, we're going to have to wait even longer for, you know, a lot, a lot more 12G products and, you know, the router. We've been the waiting hybrids. for a big 12G router for a really long time. And, you know, eventually we're just going to have to skip and go to hybrid solution or all IP for moving video around. But, um, you know, nothing really uh, it stood out in the announcements of like winning an AB as we've seen with some products in the past. No, although our, our friends at vMix won two awards. They won a streaming media award. They won some best of show awards, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, vMix was on the lanyards again this year, which, yep. you know, that they killed it. Um, vMix had a really big show. You could see around, around South that they had a big show. Um, South was, I, I think the, the, the biggest thing that I've been talking to people about is Ross moving from north to south lower and i feel like a play-by-play -play commentator yeah. it changed everything so north becomes about 360 which the 360 cameras that are out there are really cool north became like everts startups a little bit of radio and 360 so it's almost like north becomes the back of south lower what the back of south lower always became yeah and south lower is really where the game is right if you're a gearhead obviously you go to central but south lower that first part of south lower 
that's where you know all the, the big players and, are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You go through Ross, and it's it's very impressive uh, the things that they have there. Even Grass, and with the Belden move, like you can tell, they kind of haven't haven't merged the company. They haven't had time. It you just ha happened. A hundred percent. So you haven't really seen that come together. Um, you know, VizRT always has a huge show. Uh, EVS, VizRT and EVS and Adobe being right there in the heart of, of South. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the game and New Tech being behind them. New Tech had a very busy show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the NDI Pavilion has been really popular yes. as well. And, you know, so Aubrey, you have had people come up to you all week at NAB and and wanting to know more about what you've been doing back there and we are really happy that we're coming to an end here of a long three days <laughs> of shows she's been standing there uh in the middle of south upper uh at the front of the booth switching the show getting graphics in and also doing a little bit of hosting how's it been for you i'm having a great time this is like uh, obviously, it's fun to walk the floor of NAB and I'll see all the new tech and everything, uh, but it's also fun to actually do what you want to do at NAB uh, and to be a part of the reason other people love NAB. So I'm having a great time. I am excited to sit down, <laughs> but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Well, and I would like to say, like, what we're doing here with the with the Blackmagic technology and the ClearCaster, when you look at the other booths, there's a lot of other streaming happening, yeah. and there's this divide. There's a divide between people like Canon. You see them doing almost like old-school AV broadcast, sure. right? And even like the NAB show, whereas like here, it's much more innovative. We're, we're utilizing Blackmagic 4K cameras. We're utilizing, you know, almost best of breed in our, in our economical spectrum, right? Sure. Sure, yeah. Um, and having playback. 8M 4K switcher, Yeah, 8M 4K. Being the backbone. Having vMix on the back and uh, having, having ClearCaster be the encoder and having vMix be upstream and doing playback and graphics. You know, it's a lot. We have one person doing a show, cutting, switching, running a show, and I'm watching other shows where they have four people and it's not as compelling and it's not, you're not getting the same quality. It's not 4K and it's not, it's Yeah, not, it's kind uh, of amazing, it's really. Good. It is, actually. Yeah, Canon I mean, is a classic example, and I'm not knocking them, but Canon, Panasonic, it's like everyone's streaming shows, yeah. but they're doing it in almost this traditional broadcast style that almost nowadays to me feels jarring. And now, granted, I run LiveX, so you know we're used we to yeah, how we absolutely. do things, right? But it's and not the right use case for everything. And that's one of the things that we, like, try to push on our clients. Like, sure, yeah, we could do a show. We'll pull up a sat truck and we'll pull up, you know, AMV Maverick in the B unit. And we'll, we'll bust out, you know, a bunch of HDCs and big it looks heavy great. equipment. And a lot of people, a lot of look, labor. Looks yep. fantastic, you know, crew of 30, 40 people, you know, to, to get a show done. But it's not the right solution for everything. You yep. know, this, this kind of studio right here is something that people will come to live X for and, yep. you know, say that I see what you're doing. People have come up to me and said, I see what you're doing. We need to replicate this because it mu it fits the model of streaming today more, more so than that old broadcast model of having dedicated camera ops for everything. Uh, you know, multiple, like five, six operators in the control room. Yep. And, you know, a lot of like talent management and uh, creative per creative line producing that happens like before that like there's always going to be a need for telling a good story but if you have a really talented team that can multitask and juggle as you yep. like to say then you're able to pull off something that is almost just as good yeah almost just as good yeah, yeah it's true well and and for next year like every year i say this it's like when are we going to see more automation? When are we going to see more IP? When are we going to see innovation in the cloud? Real innovation, not like, oh, I'm using AWS, I'm using GCP, but I'm not telling you, I'm just putting a white label brand on top of it, right? Sure. I can't tell you how many companies, like Wows is one of the most innovative companies in the space for the last decade because yeah. they allow you to white label your brand and then other other companies have been purchased for billions of dollars that have been built that. on Wows. Yes, exactly. Right? But these other companies, it just feels like, oh, I've built this white label thing on, on top of this, this thing that's already existed. Mm -hmm. And what are the differentiators? I didn't really feel like there were a lot of differentiators this year. 
Um, there were a lot of cool, I did see Singular Live, the Cheddar guys uh, yeah, pointed yeah. out. HTML it's a really 5. cool HTML5 graphic system. Uh, Anthony from Wiles and I were talking about it last night and talking about use cases, especially in Facebook, yeah. where you have a middle layer and you're just repurposing. So you're taking like a sports feed you already have and you just want to dirty it up with social media graphics or something sure, yeah. in the middle of Facebook to the API. Really cool use cases for, for products like that. And, and some of the things we're doing at LiveX where we're trying to, you know, Add add more value with graphics that and in a more economical but but still keeping the design of of the graphics yeah, and, and speed, still keeping your brand and speed like, yeah speed is the biggest you know yep. thing for cloud graphics solutions and graphics insertion because you know it takes a lot of time to do graphics the traditional way and get them ready for playbacks yep. and yeah so I mean we we've had enough. It's been, you know, it's been great. We we really appreciate Wowza uh, for having us yes. host and produce Wowza Studio Sessions this year. And uh, we are really excited about what they're doing with the Clearcaster, you know, especially now that they have opened it up to their cloud user yep. base. I, I think that is has got some really promising uh, applications for the future of that product. You know, it, it was their first hardware appliance. Yeah. And uh, we're seeing that you know, they have a real commitment to the product. And, you know, I was talking with some of the folks at Wowza last night about, you know, they really believe in this Facebook Live mega trend that is coming. And, you know, we're just in its infancy. We are. And, uh, you know, it really is once, I, I feel like once Facebook uh, can move beyond the social feed, the mobile phone, and also become like captive video and ambient viewing. That's one thing that they haven't quite penetrated yet that can, because like, I want to go to a sports bar and see Facebook watch on the television, yes. right? You know, I want to be in an airport and see Facebook watch there. Um, yes, but, and to that point, we have not, We I don't know that we ever will, but we have not, the, the, the thing that is continuing to happen is the democratization of these technologies, as much as I say there's not as much innovation as I would like, mm -hmm. the democratization of these technologies allows us to create more content and we have not reached true content saturation. Yeah. It's the ESPN trans, transmission guy said, uh, you know, they added 120 shows and they could still add more. There is such an appetite for content yeah, um, and sure. it's not going away anytime soon. Yeah. So it bodes well for our business. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Aubrey, what do you say? Should we put this thing to bed? I think I think we can call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, thank you all for joining us for Wowza Studio Sessions at NAB Show 2018. This was the final segment uh, for Wowza Studio Sessions. I'm really glad to have Corey Banky, the founder at LiveX, join me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll see you next year at NAB, but tune in to Ready Take Live Season 2 coming soon.